The 20th century has woven into its fabric the Festival of Britain, Utility Furniture, Murphy Radio and the Design Council. Bring all these together and the name that comes to mind is Gordon Russell. He, more than anyone else, promoted British furniture design and bringing quality modern furniture into ordinary British homes. The legacy lives on today and in 2010 it was here at the Gordon Russell Museum that I met up with an important figure in the Gordon Russell story, Ray Lee. He was entirely self-taught. Um, he never had the, um, the privilege of, of uh, training as an architect, um, but he was greatly influenced um, as a young man by the arts and crafts movement. And it was from that um, base that he really started. All the early designs are really very much influenced by Jimson and the other major figures of the period. But there was one big significant difference between his thinking and the thinking of the arts and crafts people. They felt that the machine had contributed to a poor way of life for the, for the people engaged in it, poor housing, uh, not being rewarded for their work. Um, and Gordon felt uh, totally in tune with uh, many of those objectives. Um, but he didn't share their view that the machine was the enemy. Um, and that in actual fact it could be used to produce, as he put it, decent furniture for ordinary people. And that really was his mission, uh, I think. That mission was helped along by wartime necessity, when materials were in short supply. And Gordon Russell was invited to head up the government utility furniture scheme. This was quite a challenge and so he went back to his arts and crafts roots and combined appraisal of the machine to find a solution in designing a range of furniture for small workshops around the country to produce. Gordon practiced various crafts such as calligraphy, metalworking and glass, employing both hand and machine methods. He also enjoyed working in stone and virtually rebuilt his arts and crafts home above Chipping Camden single-handed. This broad craft repertoire gave him a good problem-solving approach to design and an adaptability as circumstances presented themselves. Uh, the company was saved by making Murphy radios during the 1930s a far cry from furniture. But he felt strongly about education and thought that design was taught badly, if not at all.